Hello, everybody. Today's episode is um, the difference between appearance and presence. And like I'll say this right now, a lot of this hustle and grit is for people that are in a creative industry. This is for anybody, folks. Um, anybody in any industry, and I'll explain why. Um, it became really clear if you want to advance in the career that you're in, you've got to think about the difference between appearance and presence. Like, please do. Okay. So there's this old adage that says, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. And I, I think that's really, really important to think about. And I don't think that parents talk enough of, to their kids about this because it goes back to, oh, just love yourself. Well, you know what? I'm sorry, man. I call bullshit on that. You know, like you can't do that as a parent. Like I try to tell this to my kids. I'm like, you know what? People will draw first impressions on you. So you can have this kid and I'm like, even that way you, what you call the kid. You know, you can call the kid something and right away they, they look at your name on a resume or something like that and they'll come up with conclusions. I was working with this lady and I was working with her in, um, in Dallas, Texas. And um, she was just, she was awesome. She was, she was just so sweet. And um, I was working with her at GE and um, she had a uh, boyfriend, actually a fiance, that just got out of prison. And he got out of prison and um, the guy had, um, he was just, he was, he was basically, he was the nicest guy you ever met, but he looked like a thug. So he gets out of prison, he looks like a thug, and all he does is complain that nobody's giving him a job. And at one point, she just had enough. She's like, listen, you know, what do you think people think? On your resume, you're like, okay, I did time. Yeah, you did time, you did time, you know, you're over the crime. Like, get on with it, right? And I think that the world needs to, you know, Forget that. If somebody did time, they did time. Give a guy a second chance. You know, like seriously. In Europe, sorry, but in Europe, if you did your time, you're no longer a felon. Like, wouldn't that be healthy? You just did your time. You're out. Move on. Come on. But the problem with this guy was that he didn't move on. He just he just rolled into his job. He looked like a thug. I mean, he had the way he dressed. I mean, he had like, I mean, the, his hair, everything. He looked like a thug. So like, and he would complain. He just couldn't stop complaining that people didn't give him a chance. So she was just, she just had it. And they broke up. But I understand where she's coming from. So it's like, you know, he's trying to start over, turn over a new leaf. And you can be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What does this have to do with me? Well, it has everything to do with you. The guy didn't realize and he wouldn't accept the fact that he looked like a thug and his um, paperwork said he was a thug and everything else. Everything looked out, he was, he was just a thug. What about you? What kind of impression do you give? Now, I'm not just talking about just the way you look. You, you know, there's just so many times you can't do anything about the way you look, right? I'm short. I'm like five foot eight. Like, but, you know, yeah, I wish I was six foot four and tall, dark, and handsome, but I'm not. I can't do anything about it. I can't do anything. I can do very little about the way I look. God gave you, or whoever gave you the universe, or whatever you want to think about, that gave you a certain um, attributes you can't do anything about. It. You can't get taller, you can't get shorter, you can't, it, you know, on and on and on. But that's why it's the difference between your appearance and your presence. You can definitely do something about your presence. And when I talk about a presence, I don't care who you are, what gender you are, what race you are, you know, anything. You, it, you can do something about your presence, folks. When you're talking about presence, you got to figure out your own personal brand, All right? What is it? What are you really, really good at? Like almost better than almost anybody else. What is that? And you own it. I don't care if you are a graphic designer, be the best damn graphic designer you can be in the world. And what I mean by that is that you know who the graphic designer giants are, the Michael uh, Beirous of the world, you know, and the pentagrams. You've got to know and follow these people with a passion. Understand what's happening out there. Read the magazines, read the periodicals, stay current in the conversations that are happening. Don't just roll over and die in your career. With me, I strive to be the most well-read person in the room when it comes to business or branding. And I think I am. So when we go to a company, 
Like, that gives me confidence. I look at everybody going like, hey, man, I'm short, fat, white, and ugly. But the reason you're going to use me is because I know this business better than anybody else. And that's my um, presence. It's not my appearance. It's my presence. Of course, I worry about the way I dress. You know, look at me. We kind of have this uniform, if you will. It's like black against that. Yeah, that presence or that appearance matters. But your presence matters so much more, folks. It's unbelievable. It's the reason somebody wants to do business with you. So you can ask anybody that travels with me. When I'm in a room and they said, hey, have you read about this? I'm like, no. I'll get in the truck or wherever I am and I will jump on Amazon and I'll have that book ordered and it will be sitting on my desk in two days. And if it's sitting on my desk, I will read it. And I'm not just going to read it. I'm going to memorize it. That's my, that's my presence. Like what else do I have to stand on? Like think about it. What do you have to stand on? What kind of career are you going to build up? Can you look at the camera right in the eye and say, I am the most well-read person in the room. I know business and branding as well as anybody you will find. Period. Drop the mic. That is presence. What's your presence? And like I said, it, trans it's, it's, it transcends all industries. So I worked at um, Interbrand for a little bit, and um, I was just a, I was just a creative. I was just I drew buildings. Like I'm really good at drawing buildings. Like because I did it about ten hours a day. I can draw a building like nobody's business. I can just see a space, draw it up. The clients love it, and goes to the architects, and you know turns into a rollout. Everybody sits there, eats there, buys cars from it. Blah blah blah. So that's where I came from. But I realized quite quickly in my career that it wasn't enough. Right? It wasn't enough that I knew how to draw a picture that, you know, great material on the outside was a Luca Bond and, you know, how to build a building, how to put together and all the, you know, ADA and blah, blah, blah. It wasn't enough, folks. I realized that quite quickly, maybe one or two years into it. I needed to know about business. So I went off and got my MBA in corporate finance. So here, my, my first degree is a BFA. So that's a Bachelor of Fine Arts. Like, I know how to draw and I know how to do sculpture and blah, blah, blah. Then I got an MFA or a BFA. MBA in um, corporate finance. Then I got an MA in um, leadership because I'm like, well, what, what about leadership? How do you run a company? And then I got a PhD in branding. So like you could see that these were very deliberate going like, I need information. I've got burning questions. But when I got this corporate, um, this MBA in corporate finance, I got picked up by GE Capital. And GE Capital at the time, the division went bankrupt. It was based out of Dallas. But my job was I had like, Oh, state of Ohio. So, I mean, there's like 12 million people that live here. And it's um, basically I was selling money that GE had to banks and to mortgage brokers. So we could, we could have given money to just about anybody, but we really like mortgage brokers. So I was in that whole subprime market that collapsed, right? So what I would do is I'd go into different banks and, you know, um, you know, mortgage broker shops. I mean, these, these might have 40, 50, hundred people sitting there. And I would ask for business. I'd say, hey, do you have any, um, you know, any business you can throw at me? Because, you know, our rates are really terrible, but, you know, I've got really good service and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, same old, same old. Now, if you can imagine what was happening was that this was a very fast paced and a very lucrative um, career. And so they would get people with business development experience to come work for them like let's say GE and all the um, competitors of GE. Think about that. So you went into a bank and it was mostly like VPs and presidents that you're talking to. Most of them were male. Almost all of them were. And so the companies that were these banking companies, do you know who they pulled? They pulled young, like really super hot pharmaceutical reps. So almost everybody that I was hobnobbing with was a female pharmaceutical rep. Because actually the industry that we were in paid quite a bit more than pharmaceuticals. So we would, they would pull. And it, you'd have these ladies walk around, just these were models. They were like, they knew their business, they were models, they would walk in, stiletto heels and pencil skirts. And they would talk to this 55 year old, you know, um, VP of banking or lending. And that guy may or may not have a great relationship with his wife, but 
whatever. He just enjoyed that conversation, and she would show up every day on uh, every Thursday at three o'clock, and they were just talking. You know, he's like, oh, by the way, yeah, I do have a lot of loans I can send you, Amy. And there I am. I gotta compete. <laughs> Think about that for a second. Here I am, five foot eight. And that's where I came up with my line. I'm like, I'm short, fat, white, and ugly. But I will take care of your loans. I will take care of your business. I will make sure that all your employees are paid. I know I'm expensive. I can't do anything about my rates. But tell you what, this is why you're going to work with me. Because I know this industry better than anybody else. And I did at the time. I, I just jumped into that industry. I learned finance. I learned mortgages. I learned all of this. And at the end of the day, this is, I was closing eight loans a day. That's how many loans we were closing. We turned into this huge powerhouse. It was, it, it works. So that's where I learned a lot about difference between appearance and presence, right? So I'd say, hey, you know what? <laughs> that lady's coming in with a pencil skirt. She's still coming, coming in on Thursday. There's nothing I can do about that, right? But I didn't see her as competition. She was, obviously. If she was taking money that I really needed to build my business. I really didn't see her as competition. She's still coming in on Thursday. She's still super gorgeous. I'm not. I'm coming in all over the place because, you know, I'm like, it was crazy. But that's the difference. They used me, and they used me all the time. And one of those years, I can't remember what it was, I was a county executive of the State of Ohio Award. That means they take all the banks, everybody, and they vote who's the number one account executive in this business in the state. And it was me. And it wasn't because I'm tall, dark, and handsome, folks. Trust me on this one. It was because I had presence. I had integrity and presence. So you look at somebody and say, you know what? I'll give the answers that you're looking for. I'm not going to give you bullshit. And I will produce work that, you know, I, I, I'll take care of your business. And the same strategy, what I learned from there, it's transferable to what I am now. So when I'm going in front of a company, I'm like, hey, listen, you know, you, you're going to take your bet on something. You're going to take a bet on this company or my company. Now think about that for a second. Which one do you want to, you know, which one would you rather partner up with? I, I actually don't know about just other companies. I, I really don't care. But I'll tell you what, with me, I'm going to be the most well-read person, most passionate. I'm going to tell you as it is, and you're going to have a hard time finding somebody that knows more about business and branding than me, period. Drop the mic, and if you don't like it, I'll walk out. That is the difference between appearance and presence, and it's an extremely vital difference. So, you know, when we think about your career and building up, always, I agree with that. Dress for the job you want, not the job you have. But more importantly, make sure you have presence. Find out what you can own, if you will, as a person. What's your personal brand? And you work that. And I don't see that happening enough, folks. I'll tell you that right now. I don't see it. I'd love to say, you know, I've, I've thought about this. Bring in the creatives or the people that work with us one by one after another and say in an annual review, what's your personal brand? What do you stand for? I actually don't care what it is. I just want to know. Like, what am I dealing with? How can I help you grow? How can I help you have, like, your dream career? I need to know that. You know, when, you know, you, I identify myself as founder and CEO of Boulder & Co. Creative Studio. You know, that's what I'd say. But actually, I look at myself as career development. I've dedicated the rest of my career to the rest of their career. So anything they want, wherever they want to go, I help them get it. I'm not, I'm not going to pretend that somebody wants to, you know, let's say a young videographer, you know, might be in their, you know, low 20s or something like that. I'm not going to pretend that they want to stay with us for the next 20 years. I mean, that's ridiculous. You know, they're a great videographer. Maybe they want to go shoot Red Bull commercials on a mountain somewhere. Like, go for it. But in the meantime, let's, let's hone in your skills. Doesn't that make a lot of sense? They hone in their skills and they're living with this sense of, um, you know, this sense of, um, you know, purpose. And we get to enjoy the sense of purpose, you know, because they know, hey, my goal is in five months that I can go to California and start shooting behind some big cameras and blah, blah, blah. Does that make sense? That's my sense of purpose. I help these folks build up their business, their own personal brand, and live the life to the fullest. Now, I mean, obviously, I'd rather somebody stays. But even if they stay, I want them to feel 
you know, that they are living life in the fullest. I prefer them to stay, actually. But what does that look like? How to build up your department and, you know, your business within that department. How do we build that up so it becomes a world-class um, career? So, anyways, that's the difference. I don't mean to be running off on another tangent, but that's the difference, folks, between a presence and appearance, right? Appearance is great. It's, it's good. Don't get me wrong. You got to think about your appearance. But presence is far greater. Focus on your presence.